In this episode, we answer some of your questions from the mailbag. I introduce to you a brand new organizer that you've never seen here on the channel before. And we break down the electronic side of my EDC kit. Well, folks, yeah, that's right. We're here today on another episode and we got kind of a multi layered video for you. Not only am I going to show you this rough enough, that's the brand rough enough, a 13.3 inch messenger tablet computer bookcase system here. Very simple, very effective, uh, but we're going to break down what's inside here, particularly on the tech side of my EDC kit that I've been carrying for several months now, items that I regularly carry with me, why I chose this little briefcase item to fit inside of my backpack. Now, right out of the gate, some really cool things are that Rough Enough is a US company. I believe they're located in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, this particular bag, and from what I understand, almost all their materials are made out of, uh, or gear items, are made out of Cordura fabric, which is awesome and really big plus. Uh, and then the, the reason I went with this is because uh, what I found was that in my backpacks, all my EDC backpacks, that I carry when I'm going to the office, when I'm going around town, when I'm meeting with people, doing all kinds of different things. My tablets, my, my chargers, my um, keyboard, my Bluetooth keyboard, my Bible, books, were just getting like everywhere. They're just flying around. Some backpacks had good organization for certain parts of them, but then not others, and they're in different parts of the backpack. I wanted something that I could literally fit in almost any size backpack that I carry for EDC and pull a thing out, have all of my electronics, have all my books in one simple setup. And that is what this thing offers. And it's not gonna break the bank. This thing comes in at $19 over on Amazon. We'll have links in the description below, not only over to Amazon uh, and Blade HQ, it really helps us out when you guys use those hyperlinks, help me buy gear just like this so I can give you new products, new concepts, new ideas. So thank you guys for your support, but also our Knock Around Sunglasses affiliate. In fact, we're doing a giveaway over on Instagram right now for knock around sunglasses. They have gotten a new batch of their limited uh, special edition uh, Hot Wheels sunglasses. That's what I got right here. We got flex frames, cool Hot, Hot Wheels logo, polarized, 400 UV protection, 35 bucks. Links in the description below for all of their products, which are all great prices, uh, but also hop on over to Instagram for the next few days. We're gonna be having uh, this little video. Uh, there's a video with G Gideon's Tactical Jr. and myself, and uh, you can enter in to win one of these and a Hot Wheel toy that he picked out specially for you guys. So that's over there as well. But any way that you use the links, guys, really helps us out, continue to make content. So with all that, let's break down this rough enough sleeve, organizer sleeve, uh, and also break down what's inside to show you what my EDC system is inside here when it comes to electronics. Okay, we're gonna try this from the opposite side of the table today. I've never done a video with the camera on one side and me on the other, so hopefully this will all line itself up. So Cordura fabric, 1000 denier, super awesome. Now, um, from what I'm seeing, they have locations, I guess, in Sweden, Japan and the US. So I don't know where exactly they're originally from, but very high quality from everything I'm seeing. YKK zippers, paracord poles, super nice. So the dimensions on this bag itself, when we take a look at it, is that you're on the outside, it's gonna be 14 inches by 10 and a half inches by two inches thick. The interior will be the 13.3 inches. So that's the size of like a laptop, you know, basically, or smaller. Um, thing that you could put in there. Then these two pockets that we're gonna look at right here, right out of the gate, are gonna be uh, six inches wide and seven inches deep. And so the organization is great. Just on the outside of it, really well stitched. You can even put your name right here. There's a little panel that you could do. Then they have their logo. They have, I believe, one or two other colors, if I remember correctly. Really good stitching all the way through. Nice grab handle right here, very large, a little bit thin. Um, if it, this is really weighted down, you can kind of you know rub your hand a little bit. There are no attachments for any sort of sort of shoulder strap. Um, though this is designed obviously to be a you know slide into a backpack or just carry in your hand, it would have been nice to have that as a little feature, just a simple little shoulder strap with two little like loops right here that you could clip on a shoulder strap and then you know stuff it away if you didn't want to use it. Um, it doesn't have that. You could easily, you know, just buy your own and strap it right here. This is a very large, about, I would say, eight inch strap right here, handle strap. So, but really it's designed to either hold in the hand or just organize inside your backpack. 
So on this side right here, as we open this again, as I told you, we're doing kind of a two for one. You're gonna see the organizer itself, but we're also going through my EDC electronic kit, what I carry in my everyday carry system for electronics. So uh, as we open this guy up, I love the red high vis in there. So it's very easy for you to see. And uh, what I have in here is my anchor power charger. Now this thing is a monster. This can do my iPad, full size iPad one and a half times and my iPhone eight, I think like three, four times. It's a 2000 milliamp version. Now Anchor's always cranking out, you know, like newer designs and newer sizes. This is one of their bigger, heavier ones, but I purposely did that again because I use my iPad a ton. And if it dies on me, I mean, you know, it's not, uh, I'm in trouble. So I wanted to have something that could easily recharge the whole thing. It does a quick charge. It's got two ports on there and it's got that recharging port and you have the little icon to tell you how much it is heavy though. Um, it, it's pretty, pretty beefy. So, you know, if you don't use a lot of electronics or you're just using like a phone, maybe get one of Anchor's smaller, you know, like candy bar size ones, but I love Anchor. I think this is like $45 to $50 for this guy. I'll have a bunch of Anchor, different sized battery chargers, portable battery chargers um, in the links below. They have lots of options, bigger, smaller ones than this. I swear by Anchor. They've never sent me a single product for free. Uh, I, but I, I am free advertising for them because I love them. Uh, they really do a great job. And again, links below. So different sizes there, but that, that's what I carry. And then, uh, I got an anchor, you know, um, lightning cable. Again, those are good quality. They're not going to eat up the battery of whatever, you know, um, electronic device you are using. So I have that. And then I also have anchor Bluetooth headphones. I just recently started doing anchor Bluetooth headphones and, uh, they really work well. Um, for, I think I paid $20 for them. They produce a really good sound. The weight distribution is a little off, but I think a lot of Bluetooth are like that. And for the price, I'm getting really good quality, um, for the money. So that's what I use for my Bluetooth. I've been rocking those for about six months, maybe four months. Um, for my Bluetooth earphones. Then on our other side here, um, this guy, I don't even think it has any markings on it. I'll double check here. This is a fold out keyboard and it doesn't. Uh, I will annotate it in, in the, in the links to Amazon. Uh, this is a full size keyboard almost. It was like three fourths the size. Uh, it folds up, slides into place, Bluetooth. I've had to try, I've been using it for, I think eight months. And I've had to recharge it like twice and I use it every single week for probably three hours, two hours, two hours a week, every week. The battery is insane on this thing, really collapses down nice. This acts as like a little mount that you could put either your phone or iPad in or, you know, tablet, as long as there's not a super thick case that uh, acts as that. And then this guy works fantastic. Love, love this thing. And then again, folds up. So it's better than just the little keyboards that I used to use on that are just the size of an iPad or a tablet. These are larger, so you can actually get your, like your full motion. It's just faster for me. Then I got receipts in there. I got a couple highlighters and that's about it. But I, I don't even know. And on the back side of the bag, there's no pockets, no organization, nothing like that. Just the Cordura logo. Uh, maybe it would have been nice to have a big long zipper, you know, like different pocket back there. But again, that would just kind of max it out. I think it, I haven't wanted anything extra here, but uh, no organization on the back side. Then as we go to the main compartment here, double pulls again, YKK zippers that'll go just to these corners right here. Again, really nice high vis in there, which is fantastic with that kind of slick nylon. And then we have a bunch of stuff in here. I have a magazine that I just wanted to show you guys, you know, any normal size magazine will absolutely fit in there. Uh, outside magazine buyer's guide right now. We're going to look at, into that and see if there are any good deals or any recommendations of gear that we could test out this year. Um, and then what we have in here is just a big main pocket that you can put a lot of items, obviously paperwork. And again, guys, the reason that I bought this was because my paperwork, different things like that was just flying all over the interior of the main compartment of all my backpacks. It doesn't matter if it was like a VanQuest, a Vertex, a 511, um, Mountain Smith, doesn't matter what it was. I would have like paperwork in this pocket, in my iPad in this pocket, in my tab, in my keyboard in this pocket, and my chargers over here. And it was just all over the place. This keeps the papers from getting damaged, keeps my books from getting wrinkled and crinkled and all that type of stuff. Everything's nice and slim and everything's in one stop shop. And that's why I like it. So I got my iPad here again, just a generic case. I've dropped this thing a bunch though, rubberized, you know, really high quality um, for what I paid again, probably about. 20, $25. I'll try and find it. Just has a Y on there. You know, some no name Chinese company. It's got the little kick out leg for my iPad. Holds it up at a good angle. All the um, ports are accessible, which is great. And it has really good dust covers on this 
Again, I'll annotate if I, I'm, I'm trying to remember all this stuff, guys, I'll annotate this in, but there's the dust cover little port, but it kind of covers it up for your earbuds as well. And then your controller all works really well. Your camera isn't covered or anything like that. And it's very thick. You can see there, I mean, it's got a lot of rubber to work with. So I've dropped this guy a couple times and, and no issue, but you can see there, I mean, that was plenty of room to spare. I could be, I can have it standing up on one side and still zip this thing. And this is, I believe the iPad Air, I believe is what this is. Um, so I don't remember. Um, but anyway, so that's that. And then inside here, we just have one zippered compartment with another YKK zipper that I put my Bible. So that's where I have that. So again, because I was throwing this in the bottom of my bags and I like, I know some of you guys are probably like, why don't you have a digital like on your iPad, it's fine. I just like the hard copy stuff. I like highlighting stuff. I just like reading that way. And I look at enough screens. I like reading, you know, normal uh, Bible, but I, I'll throw it in there and just be like, you know, just getting crinkled at the bottom. So this gives me the ability to not only again, organize other paperwork. What else do I got in there? Yeah, I just got some other notes stuff that I'm working with. But again, it, it keeps all the edges pretty good. Um, and particularly the Bible or other, you know, reading material that you may be doing if you're just, you know, into novels and you like reading books and having a hard car, you know, like actual like books, not digital books. Um, then that's a great thing as well, because it, that little sleeve in there will kind of keep all the pages from getting all wrinkled and crumpled in a backpack or something like that. So um, that is the not only EDC system, but also the rough enough 13.3 inch tablet organizer. So this is how I organize my EDC system for my electronics guys. All right, so we're gonna break down a few mailbag questions from you guys. And don't forget, if you wanna get a question answered in an upcoming video, just put hashtag mailbag and you might get it answered in one of our upcoming videos live. So this first one, again, every time, Darth Kroll, you are insane with your great questions. Guys, you need to follow his lead. He's doing some good work with the questions. Ask, who shot first, Han or Greedo? Easy, Han blasted that sucker before he could pull the trigger. That is one of the most annoying moments in cinema when that was redone with the re-releases of the original Star Wars trilogy and they made it try, and George Lucas tried to make it where uh, Greedo shot first and missed and then Han you know, shot him underneath the table. No way. Han is a smuggler, is a bad guy. That's part of his persona and who he is. And of course, he blasted first. He wasn't going to let Greedo get the j j drop on him. And uh, Han shoots first every time. Brian Steenrod asks, Great knife. Have you ever done the John Muir Trail? What knife would you take if you could do the whole trip? Great question. I have not done the trail as of yet. I would love to do the trail at some point in my life. Um, and I, I would have to double check the amount of foliage that you go through. It would be really hard, but I would say probably, and I'm going to have to do an upcoming video on this, but I just really just kind of pulling it out of the, out of a hat, right out of what comes to my mind would be the SE Hungerless, um, two, that one, because it's a little bit shorter, a little bit easier balance, still can absolutely chop baton. I can still get pretty good control over it for the finer cut stuff. I mean, I'd still have something else with me. I mean, I'd either have a Mora, I'd have a pocket knife, I have a multi-tool, you know, I would have something else, but uh, as like my main tool, that would probably be it, you know, and I could probably get away with a lot of stuff, particularly depending on foliage. I would have to double check what you go through on that trail, but that would, off the top of my head, that's probably what I would take. All right, and then this one comes from JS Badger, Preparedness, Survival, and Thriving. And uh, JS asks, where would you say you are in your level of preparedness? Well, the quote at the end of every episode is stay equipped and stay prepared. And I'll be honest, like, you know, that is my mindset. That's what I try and do. You can never be 100% prepared. I mean, it's impossible. You have to be able to improvise in a survival situation, emergency situation, injury, problem, car crash, end of the world, doesn't matter. You gotta be able to improvise. If you can't do that, you're, you're dead on dead on scene. Um, so what I would say, if I was just kind of rating myself on level of preparedness, I would say probably a six. That's what I would rate myself. I can definitely improve. Um, some of it, and I'll, I'll I'm gonna talk about this in an upcoming video, comes from running a YouTube channel. You're constantly like having to get gear here to move here to have a concept there. So I need to really solidify a couple survival kits that I have going on with my car. I mean, I always have stuff in my car, but um, that it that it's there and then you you set it, you forget it. You never go for it again. You never use it for like another video I'm doing or something, um, you know, for a camping trip, you can't do that. So 
Um, and I have survival kits like all over the place. But I mean, if it was like, hey, you have five minutes, it would be kind of a madhouse. And I know I would forget things and it wouldn't be as good as it could be. So I'm going to say a six right now. And just on my skill level training, um, you know, I'm a gear reviewer. I'm not a survivalist. I've never claimed to be a survivalist. I give you guys concepts. I have basic knowledge of survival skills, but I have a lot to learn and I want to learn and, and go. To, I want to do some survival training courses over my life and some different things like that to learn some skills that I'm, I know about, but I'm not proficient in at the moment. So uh, I hope that answers your question. I would rate myself a six out of 10. Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks again for coming over here, watching this quick video. Hope this little item that I just stumbled across, and they got a lot of gear. They have a lot of Cordura fabric, YK zippered, organizers, pouches, little bags, little compact stuff. Go check them out over again on those links below, particularly over to Amazon, and you can see all that they are producing and making. So uh, I hope it's been informative, helped you guys out. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget about the mailbag. Put hashtag mailbag below, and you guys might get one of your questions answered in an upcoming video. Uh, don't forget also about the Gideon's Tactical Show that goes up every Saturday, completely different than our gear reviews and all the things that we normally do here. It's more of an interactive entertainment, you know, fun, news, commentary, all that type of stuff uh, that has to do with the outdoors and just our lifestyle that if you're watching this channel, you probably are into. So uh, check those out as well every Saturday. And uh, if you're not a current subscriber, I invite you to subscribe and be become part of the GT family that we have here. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.